If you are nervous about flying with a bicycle for the first time or are simply curious about what the process is like, this video is for you. Hey friends, Sheila here. I am a bicycle traveler and today I'm going to take you through everything from booking to boxing to boarding when it comes to flying with my bicycle. In a moment, I'm going to box my bike with you so you can see how it's done and share some of the challenges you might face getting to the airport and at the airport. But first off, let's talk about booking a flight so you can avoid some of the biggest pitfalls of flying with a bicycle. Before I dig in, I need to give a quick disclaimer. I'm sharing my personal experiences and I hope this is helpful, but every situation is unique and it is crucial to do your own individual research. Okay, let's talk about what I've found to be the do's and don'ts of booking flights. Most importantly, if you are looking at a potential flight or airline, read the fine print on baggage and bicycles and make zero assumptions. You want to be crystal clear on the airline's rules around bicycles. When you are booking a flight, of course, direct is ideal. However, whether it be because a certain destination requires a connecting flight or because a connecting flight is going to be a much more budget-friendly option, sometimes connecting flights and layovers are necessary. When I have a connecting flight with my bicycle, I really try to have ample layover time. I prefer at least two and a half hours. Honestly, I would rather have more. Hanging out in an airport isn't necessarily always the funnest, but if for some reason that first flight is delayed, sure, I can run and try to make my connecting flight, but that isn't the case for my bicycle. And my bicycle might not make that second flight. And if I am flying somewhere to start my bike trip, it's pretty sucky to have to wait multiple days to start your trip and to not know if your bike is even going to get there. It's all very stressful. So for me, I would rather just give myself that extra time, have that layover and feel extra confident that my bike is going to be able to make that connecting flight. The second thing I have found with connecting flights is that in my experience, they're kind of two different types of connecting flights. So if I am flying from point A to point C through point B, sometimes this type of flight is provided all by the same airline or by two different airlines who are working together. So airline one gets you point A to point B, airline two gets you point B to point C, but they're kind of working together. I don't exactly know how it works on the back end, but essentially they've teamed up to create this flight and that means they take care of everything. When you get to point B, you don't need to pick up your bike. You don't need to worry about anything. You just transfer yourself over between point A and point C and they take care of your bag and your bike. And then if for some reason something goes wrong, in theory, you should only have to deal with one airline. On the other hand, I've also had experiences where airline one and airline two aren't working together. This is often when I'm using kind of a secondary website that goes, hey, there's this cheap flight and there's this cheap flight. You could put them together and then have a cheaper way to get where you're going, which is awesome, except it means that these airlines don't work together. So during my layover, I would have to pick up the bike and transfer it over to airline two so that they can take my bike the rest of the way. This means that for one, you're paying for your bike twice. You're paying to airline one, you're paying to airline two. You have to worry about transferring your bike over, which again can be stressful, especially if flight one is delayed. So I really avoid doing doing this type of connecting flight as much as I can. I prefer to find a flight that's all provided by either one airline or two airlines that are working together. And I make sure to confirm extra clearly with them that there is nothing needed from me at point B that I don't have to worry about it once I check my bike in. I have nothing to worry about. The next thing when it comes to booking is I'm very careful with budget airlines and I honestly try not to fly them with my bike. They are so tempting because often they'll have this really cheap upfront cost, but usually a lot of the way they make money is in their bags, which means that if you're flying with an extra bag, if you're flying with a bicycle, that can really add up. And sometimes it doesn't even end up being worth it. 
The other thing I found is that I think one of the ways they save money is they don't have as much staff. They don't have as many customer service reps to help. So when I did have an issue, it was really, really hard to get a hold of somebody. It was hours upon hours of waiting on hold. Once I'd gotten to my destination, it was no fun. So even though those budget airlines look really appealing up front, I try not to book them anymore. Now, while we're on the subject of budget, the cost to bring a bicycle on a flight varies widely between airlines. I've seen everywhere from $50 Canadian to $150 Canadian, and I've heard it can even be much more than that. So every time a flight catches my eye, I look at the cost of the flight and then check the airline's policies to see how hard it's gonna be to bring a bike and what the cost is. Because even if the upfront flight cost might seem great, it might not be as great once I see how much it's gonna cost cost to bring a bicycle. Okay, so once you've found a flight and an airline you're interested in, then you have to look at the specifics for your bike. So typically there will be dimension specifics. Often there will be a total number that is the total length, width, and height that is allowed. For instance, I just looked up with Air Canada, it's 115 inches, which means your height plus your length plus your width can't be more than 115 inches. But every airline is different, so definitely check yours. And sometimes they'll also have a maximum length. This is really important to be aware of when you are looking for a bike box. Some flights or airlines will also have a weight limit on the bike box. They may also have rules about how the bike needs to be disassembled, and they might have rules about what can and can't go in the box. Even if I think I understand everything really well from the website, I will often call just for extra confirmation. Once I book the flight, I make sure I get written confirmation of the booking and that my bicycle is booked on that flight. I do as much research as I can, I get as many confirmations as I can, and I show up with as much documentation as I can. This might seem like overkill, but to me, I feel that if for some reason an airline doesn't want to take my bicycle or they feel like it hasn't been booked properly, I'm pretty powerless. So I try to do everything I can to set myself up for success. All right, let's box that bike. The first thing that you need when you are flying with a bicycle is obviously the box itself. If you're traveling somewhere where you're gonna be in one spot and just doing some little rides around there, or if you're doing a loop and ending up in the same spot, there's the option to bring a hard shell or soft shell or permanent bike case. In that case, you'd likely want to work something out with the person you're staying with, or if you're staying in a hotel, a lot of hotels, if you're staying with them at the beginning and end of your trip, they tend to be quite open to storing your box for you. It's possible they might wanna charge a fee for this, but a lot of them will do it complimentary so long as you're a guest. For me though, I tend to be flying into one place and flying out of another, so I always go with a cardboard bike box. Most bike stores have plenty of these lying around, but to be on the safe side, I tend to call ahead to make sure I'm not gonna you know, be there on a recycling day or a day where they just might not have any bike boxes. So I tend to call ahead to make sure that I have a bike box. And you can even ask them if they would be so kind as to keep some spare packaging materials for you. If they don't have any or they aren't able to, I've picked up you know, bubble wrap and other kinds of protective materials from hardware stores and that kind of thing. So there are always plenty of options to keep your bike protected in the box. I often like to start by flipping the box over and putting some extra tape on the bottom. If I notice any particular wear and tear, I just put some extra tape there. I tend to be pretty liberal with my tape just for my own peace of mind. Then it's time to start taking my bike apart. I start by removing any kind of accessories and this can sometimes vary depending on the size of the box, if there's anything else I'm trying to put in the box. So there is some variability, but for me, I always remove the pedals and I almost always also remove the bottle cages, fork mounts, rack, and seat post and saddle. At home, I have more tools, but on the road, I do all of this with a simple multi-tool. So it's really just a matter of making sure that my multi-tool has all the different sizes of Allen keys that I'm going to need. First, I remove the bottle cages. And I make sure to put the bolts back in so I don't lose them. Then come the pedals. 
When it comes to removing your pedals, a helpful little tool I like to remember is that when you are pedaling forward, you are tightening your pedals because you wouldn't wanna be able to pedal and have your pedals come loose on you, right? So when you are going forward, you're pedaling forward, you're tightening them, so you want to rotate the opposite way in order to loosen them. And finally, the rack and fork mounts come off too. Now on to keeping the rear derailleur as safe as possible. In order to better protect the derailleur, I shift it so that it's on the largest cog in here, and therefore the derailleur is brought closer in to the bike. Airlines tend to require that the tires be deflated. When I'm flying with tubes, I almost fully deflate them. Because these are tubeless, I let out the air to about 15 to 20 PSI. That way it's hopefully enough to satisfy the attendant at the gate, but it's not so much that the tires will unseat themselves. So far, I haven't had any issues with this method. Next, I remove the front wheel and gently reinsert the through axle to keep everything in place. I always want to keep the ends of the fork well protected, so I make sure it gets a lot of padding. The parts I tend to be most careful to protect are the derailleurs, the disc rotors, if you have disc brakes, the bottom of the fork that the wheel mounts into, and right now I tend to be a little more careful with my fork as a whole, just because it's carbon. But other than that, in terms of kind of covering and protecting my bike. It kind of depends how much packing material I have. Because I have a lot of packing materials today, I'm gonna use a lot of them, but in situations, especially when I'm returning home and I might not have as much packaging materials, I just try to kind of create barriers creatively with fabric or whatever bubble wrap I'm able to buy to just try to keep everything from kind of scratching or rubbing. All right, now it is time to remove the handlebars so that they can go sideways and fit into the box. I think the best practice typically is to remove from the front faceplate. When I do it this way, I make a couple little lines with black marker just to show where the bar is supposed to be lined up. This is because fit is really important. So even a small difference can feel big to our bodies and I wanna make sure that I'm reinstalling the handlebar in the exact same way. In this instance though, I have my Ortlieb handlebar mount that is kind of a nuisance to take off. So instead, I remove the handlebars by removing the entire stem, but in order to make sure that my fork doesn't get kind of loose in there, I secure it in place with a zip tie just so that everything doesn't slide around. Then I use a marker or electrical tape to mark the height of my seat post and remove the saddle and seat post. Now the actual placing of the box. Cheesies. Hi. This is Cheesies. She wanted to make a little visit, eh? There's a lot going on right now. Now the actual inserting of the bike into the box may be a little hard to show you, but basically I try to insert the main part of the bike into the box. I put the front wheel with the rotor inside this kind of uh, triangle here to help protect the rotor. And I also try to insert the front wheel on the same side as the drivetrain, just to try to create some extra protection for the derailleur and all of those components. And then the handlebars kind of end up wherever they end up. Sometimes kind of top to bottom, sometimes side to side, sometimes on an angle. Really depends on the size of the box. And if the ends of the wheel hubs are poking into the cardboard at all, I see if I have anything like this in my collection of packing materials. But if not, I've kind of cobbled various things together over the years using cardboard or foam or whatever I had just to kind of build up a bout of padding so that it doesn't poke through the box and potentially damage it or cut a hole in the box. Once all the main components are in, then I start to add in any Anything else like my seat post and saddle or my rack. In this case, I ended up actually reinstalling my rack because I found there was room for it and it would help protect the side of my axle from poking out. So you don't always get it perfect the first time. Sometimes you kind of have to play around until you find the right fit for that particular box and your particular bike. 
In terms of putting other stuff in your box, like your tent or your sleeping bag or any of your other gear, this is a bit down to personal preference. I don't tend to stick a ton in my box because what I do instead is I get a second hand or a really old suitcase and I put all my stuff in it and then I fly with that suitcase and my bike box to wherever I'm going and then I re-donate or give away that suitcase once I get there. I've heard of people traveling with a lot of their gear in their box. If that is something you want to do, I would say to just be cautious about the weight regulations and whether that airline says anything specific about whether you can put other things in that box and also allow time in case you have issues at the airport. When I have had to open my bike box to show airlines, in the past they've just kind of looked at the bike, they see that's all there is and they seal it back up, but I have seen others who have more stuff in there have to actually take all of those items out. So you just want to budget that in your time and your comfort level. But for me, it's mostly just the bike going in the box. And then once everything's in there roughly where I want it to be, I kind of wiggle everything to kind of simulate all the changes it might go through in its journey to try to make sure nothing's gonna knock into each other. And then I put padding in any places that I think I need it. And then with whatever I have, whether it be elastics or old busted tubes or zip ties or rope, I try to kind of tie everything into place so that everything tries to stay where I want it to be for the journey. And I also like to zip tie everything together in case my box gets a hole in it because keep in mind the boxes can get tossed around or deal with water damage on the tarmac. I like having everything secured together so that if the box rips, nothing falls out and gets left on the tarmac. Then I seal it all up with a lot of tape and I write my name, phone number, email, and address or where I'm flying from and to all on the box just as an extra security measure in case my bike gets lost in transit. Also, if there's any kind of like cracks or rough spots, I try to tape them up. And if there's any barcodes, uh, I cross them out just to avoid confusion. I'm back. Let's talk about boarding. To get to the airport, I typically ask for a van taxi or I book an extra large Uber, but I still add extra time in case that vehicle isn't big enough. So that if for some reason they can't take it, I still have time to get a new vehicle to help me out. I plan to be at the airport at least three hours ahead. It might seem like overkill, but I'd way rather sit at my gate than be stressed about whether myself and my bicycle are going to make it to the airport in time and get on the flight in time. Once you get to the airport, most airports have carts. I'm not gonna lie, this part of the process is always awkward. It's not easy to maneuver a boxed bike around an airport, but just stay positive, you'll get it done eventually. Typically at the airport, even if you check in yourself and any other standard bags at the regular check-in point, you'll be directed to an oversized baggage drop-off, which is where you would leave your bike. Sometimes they will open the box and do a visual inspection, otherwise they just put it through a scanner. When you get to your destination, it's likely that your bicycle won't come out of the regular baggage area. So again, you'll need to find the oversized baggage pickup point. And now you've done it. You've gotten to your destination. You have your bike, yay. But you do still need to put it together. Some people put it together at the airport and bike straight off with it. I often, especially because, you know, flights can be long, I can be tired, I will often book an Airbnb or a cheap hotel, just get another van taxi or extra large Uber to get me there, then I can have a good sleep and build my bike the next day. I've been rambling at you for a long time now, so I won't go through the whole rebuilding the bike process. For my first bike tour, I was really worried about building up my bike safely, so I kind of put it together to the best of my ability. I brought it to a bike shop, I told them what I did, and I asked them to give it you know, a little tune up and check to make sure my work was okay and to get the bike fully safe and ready to ride. So just know there are options. There are wonderful bike shops ready to give you tips and help you with boxing your bike or building your bike back up. Flying with a bike 
can feel intimidating at first, but there's no reason why it should keep you from having a big, wonderful, beautiful adventure. Okay, that's it for today's video. A big, big thank you to all of my patrons who make videos like this one possible. If you enjoyed this video and you got some value from it, or if you want the behind the scenes scoop and extra tips, consider joining us over on Patreon. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Bye.